a modified Brummel splice on 7 millimeter Dynex ducts. Now you can see the tools you need. Number one, the line, obviously. Um, a line terminator uh, that we want to splice in. You want to have uh, two fids. Now what works very nicely for 7 millimeter ducts is a quarter inch fid and a um, 3 eighths inch fid. Um, this also, also works really good for the 9 millimeter line. And then uh, you want a marker and a tape measure and a good sharp knife. In this case is the ceramic knife that, uh, that you rarely need to sharpen and that works very, very well for the splicing process and, and cutting um, Clico Ducks rigging. So the first thing we want to do with 7 millimeter line, we uh, need to measure out the berry section. Now 72 times the diameter for 7 millimeter line is about 19 inches. So I'm, what I'm going to do is measure out 19 inches and then put a mark on the line at the, roughly the 19 inch point. Now you don't have to be exact on this mark because we are going to measure out and cut the line to exactly 19 inches for the berry after we've done the primary part of the splicing. So now what we want to do is take the line terminator and wrap the line around the terminator placing the mark such that we would know where to pass it through the line. So I'm going to wrap the line around the line terminator, bring it back to the other section of the line, and then I have a rough idea of where I want to put the pass through on the line section. Now you can see this is the line that has the tail uh, with the mark on it. So what I'm going to do now is place a mark at the apex of three strands with the marker, and that's going to be my point of pass through right there. Okay, now that we've made that mark, and it's, it's, again, it's important to make it at the apex of three strands because you can actually put a mark on one of the strands and then that'll help or that'll uh, hurt your variance um, because you won't be able to pass, actually pass the fid through exactly where the mark is. It would be off somewhat. So it's important to put that mark at the apex. So now you just remove the line terminator and then what we're going to do at this mark is we're going to loosen up the weave a little bit like this. We're going to disrupt it and then take our small fid and pass it through. Now you can see I'm passing, I'm inserting the fid at the section where I placed the mark earlier. Now what you want to do is make sure there's six strands on each side of the fid. And you can count them if you want. I'm kind of used to seeing six strands on each side. So I'll pull on each side of the uh, fid to open up that hole slightly, but another trick that I do is I take the larger 3 8 fid and send it through the line to open that up even more. Now it's, it's important to open it up enough to pass the line through it, but not too much that you don't stress out the line and, uh, and distort it and your measuring process isn't quite complete. So now what you want to do is push the line through and you can see when I cut the line I made a nice taper to make things uh, like this easier. Uh, to push the line through. Okay, now you want to pull the line through and then take the line terminator and put it back into the loop you just made. Pull everything tight like it's going to be when it's on the boat and then you can see I'm pushing this other portion of the line in and I'm pulling this line down. And what you want to do is take your marker and then make a mark approximately a quarter of an inch back from the, uh, the pass-through portion and again you place the mark at an apex of three strands. So that's going to help with our accuracy in measurement a little bit. Okay, now, now that we have our mark, what you want to do is take the line terminator back out and then pull, pull the, the mark section through again and then what we're going to do is open this up, loosen the weave up and open this up so we can insert the fit like we did last time. So take your smaller fid, once you've loosened up the weave, and then at the mark, you push, push the, thrid, the fid through the ducts. And then again, um, open this up a little bit with the fids. Now, an important trick here is, this is the part portion of the Brummel splice that we need to invert. So we're going to need to have a re relatively large hole here so that we can um, insert the, the, the end of the line back through this. So a, a nice little trick I do here is I take the larger fid, open it up, move it back and forth, and then I take the smaller fid, 
and insert it on the opposite, in the opposite direction, so I get both fids in the line like this. And it's a little bit of work, you just take your time and work it through. And then you take the fids and you do this, and you stretch it out considerably. You know, now I take two fids, and these are sized correctly for this line. Again, a quarter inch and a three eighths fid, and I, I'll just do this and really open up that hole. So now that we have our, our hole opened up uh, with our fids, what we want to do is set this up so it's set up in a circular fashion um, and the end leading off to my left and then back in towards the center of the circle. Now what I'm going to do is place this, the end of the line, through the hole and slowly run it through and invert that hole. So you can see how easy that was. So you just pull it through. Now another trick here is to take both fids again, insert the large fid into the hole and then the smaller fid in the opposite direction and open this hole up again, just the same way we did it before. But now the hole is inverted um, and you'll see why we need such a large hole in a second. So I'm going to take and remove both fids and you can see I still have my circle here. What I'm going to do now is close down the loop slightly. I'm going to form an apex, a tight apex with the end of it, and then I'm going to bring that towards the center of the circle again and put that through the enlarged hole that I just made. Now that's where it's important to remember the directions because if you do it wrong then you'll do a double inversion and it'll make the splice even tougher. So now what I'm going to do is just pull that all the way through and you can see I've got the Brummel splice set up where this line, this line goes through this line, and then this line goes through this line. So it's a locking part of the Brummel that will not come off. Okay, so now that we've got both pass-throughs completed, what we want to do is take the terminator and fit it back into the loop we just made. Now, this a lot of times is going to be a really, really tight fit. You can make this work by working this around the terminator, or there's another trick that I'm going to show you when you have a tight fit um, that you can stretch this out slightly because it'll get stretched out on the boat anyway um, to make it a little bit easier to put the terminator on. So what you want to do is take another piece of wood or an extra large fid, you might say, um, <laughs> Put the loop, something that you can put the loop around and then stretch it out. And I happen to have another fid that makes this a little bit easier. Um, so you can put this on, in, in this instance I have this 2x4 and this large fid. And what I can do is stretch this out slightly. And you can see as I'm putting pressure on this, it's stretching it out slightly. So now the trick here is to not do it too much. You don't want to overstretch it. So I'm just going to stretch it that much and we're going to see how that fits onto our terminator. So get the line back in shape here and then put it on and you can see the terminator now slides right on. So there you have it. The next step is to measure out the length of the barrier that we want. Now a trick that I use is I take uh, to help with consistency, I take and put this on the edge of a table along with the tape measure on that same very edge. And then I just stretch things out. And again, for our seven millimeter, we want 19 inches. So I'm gonna put a mark right at the 19 inch line and then cut the line there. <laughs> 